Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rox and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how to add a checkbox control to an Excel form. Pay attention to this word control. Let me demonstrate. Over here I have two checkboxes. Notice that when I click in the checkbox there is a result on a cell. Clear it and I get the answer falls in the cell check I get the answer true and that's because I've established a linking cell to the checkbox control that I drew on the worksheet. Up here by contrast I have no link cell so clicking checked or unchecked has no effect on a cell. I can easily change that by right mouse clicking on the control that I've drawn say format the control and in the dialog box make sure you have the control tab activated and then select the cell that you want to link the control to. Click OK. So now look what happens when I clear it, I get the answer false. Check and I get the answer true. So true, false, yes, no, the number one, the number zero. That will become clearer as we proceed. The second gotcha step is in Excel 2007 to make sure that you can actually draw and then link the checkbox. In order to do so, the developer tab must be displaying on the ribbon. It's not displaying by default. So here's what you do. Go over to the Office button and choose Excel Options. On the Popular tab, make sure that you're able to answer true when you check this box. Answer this question. Show the Developer tab on the ribbon. Click if you want the answer to be true. All right, now let me show you how we can actually first draw the control and then link the control to a cell. So pick a cell, it really doesn't matter because when we come up here to the developer tab on the ribbon in the controls group, when we see the drop down, another gotcha is that we have ActiveX controls and form controls. Ignore, ignore the ActiveX controls. We want to draw a form control that is a checkbox. So notice that the mouse really does nothing. We just get this little arrow. So we first draw the control to the dimensions that we want. We can also go through and change the label and just say true. And I'd like to put a question mark after that. Now remember that all we've done is draw the control and we can change its dimensions. In order for it to be effective, we must link it. So right mouse click, format the control, come over here on the control tab and then pick the cell that you want to have linked click OK and now when we click we get the result of true clear it we get the answer false alright now in this lesson I'm going to show you how to use the checkbox control in three scenarios first to control the results of a cell that we're going to use in a formula we're going to use the function PMT to determine our monthly loan payment Next, we're going to use control boxes to answer true or false for proficient. Are you proficient in Excel, proficient in PowerPoint? In our third, we're going to use the checkbox as a toggle switch. Do I want to show conditional formatting? Yes or no. Hide it or show it. True or false. All right, let's get started. Let's come over here and we want to use the PMT function to determine our monthly loan payment. I've already drawn the control for the toggle over here for the true or false, but I've not yet linked it to a cell. So come over here and right mouse click, say format the control. With the control tab activated, select the cell that you want to have the control linked to. Click OK. All right, now let's use the uh, function arguments dialog box. Equals PMT. And at this point, I like to use the keyboard shortcut Control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. Notice for the PMT function, there are five arguments, three of which are required. The first three arguments are labeled in bold. That means that they are required. 
The fifth argument is an optional argument, and that's where we're going to use our checkbox control. All right, our rate, we point to the cell that contains our annual interest rate. We want to make a monthly payment, so we want to divide that by 12 for 12 months. The number of payments is in this cell. We're going to be making 360 monthly payments. The third requirement argument points to the cell that contains the present value, the amount that we're going to borrow. This is our first optional argument, FV, the future value. In other words, after we've finished making 360 payments, our balance will be zero. Fill that in. Now, over here, for the cell that contains the link to our control, we are able to use this because this argument returns a logical value, true or false the number 1 for true, the number 0 for false. When we actually make the payment at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period will determine the amount that we pay. So over here we want to point to the cell that contains the link to our checkbox control. And now let's see the result. When the value is true, this is the amount of our monthly payment. When we clear it, notice that we pay a higher amount. So making the payment at the beginning or the end of the period will determine the amount that we pay each month. Now let's come over in our second scenario. I've already established the controls and I've established links. I always like to verify that I have established the correct cells to be linked. It's often overlooked as you'll see in this lesson. So coming through here you can see that I have properly set up by links. Now another question that I get frequently is, all right, Danny, I've set up the controls and I've set up the links, but how do I get a count of how many people are proficient? How do I get a count of how many people need some remedial work? For that, I use the count if function. Let me work you through the count if function. Two arguments. The range, so the range that I select to be evaluated is the range of cells that are the link cells. The second argument is the criteria. What criteria do I want to use? So inside double quotation marks, I said how many count the number of trues. Down here, count if, within this range of the linked cells, count the number that respond to the criteria false. All right, remember when I talked about verifying that I have the correct link set up? What I've done over here is I've inserted a new column D to be able to actually draw the control. And I say, well, that's easy. All I now have to do is copy and paste. So remember to right mouse click when you want to copy and then right mouse click and say paste. And you say, ha ha, that's easy. Well, again, verify it. Click in here which cell is the link. You see, you copied the control, but it was already linked to cell E5. So make sure that you verify. Right mouse click, format the control, and make sure that you have it going to the correct cell. So we want to move it down one row. If you don't see control, if control is not showing up, it's because this is what happened. When you went to the developer tab, insert you selected this checkbox the one in active x ignore 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 active x this is the cell that you want this is the checkbox that you want to uh, choose the one in the form controls draw it and i recommend using the alt key to select the cell in this case we don't need the label we can change the dimension but always remember to link it format control and then come over here if control is not showing you select Select the active X. Select the cell with the link, and if you wish, you can apply 3D shading. That's an optional. And then verify. So there you go. All right. Now, in our third and final scenario, we've used the checkbox control as a toggle. For this range of cells called dollars, either hide the conditional formatting or show the conditional formatting. So I've used conditional formatting to apply green shading to the cells that are within the five highest values of the range, the red formatting in the cells that show the lowest values in the range. I'll quickly show you how this works. Go to the Home tab of the ribbon. Of course, I would have first selected the cells I wanted to apply conditional 
conditional formatting to, and I've used rules. Now, it's beyond the scope of this lesson to actually go through and show you how I created that. I have a separate lesson that I'll work you through this. So I've applied a formula that can be answered logically true or false. If true, then apply the shading to the cells of the five lowest, apply the shading to the cells of the five highest. So there you've seen three uses for the checkbox control. Make sure you establish a link to the cell. That's your first gotcha. Make sure you have the developer tab showing on the ribbon in Excel 2007. And finally, make sure that you select the checkbox that is in the form control, not the active X control. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.